We're not going to change the way Andrew plays. Andrew's going to play the game. You've got to let Andrew play. I think the turnovers will happen from time to time. There are a few decisions, of course, from last year he looks at and is like, man, I shouldn't have done that. But I think that's all part of the process. I think he grew a lot last year just by actually being able to <clears throat> sit back and watch a little bit. He went on to say how Luck has an incredible football IQ, which we've always heard. Stephen A., what do you make of Schottenheimer's comments on Luck? Well, Skip would tell you this. Um, <clears throat> I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a bigger fan of Andrew Luck than me. I believe in this guy. Um, I think he's an incredibly nice guy, first of all. Secondly, he's smart as hell. Uh, and, and I believe in his talent. He should have been the number one overall pick when he was. As much as I respect RG3 and I got love for him, I've always been an Andrew Luck guy, and I'm going to stay that way. I do believe this guy is a future Hall of Famer. I do believe that this guy has a couple of Super Bowl titles in his future. I do believe that this guy has the potential to be as great as the great ones, whether it's from John Elway and Peyton Manning to, to uh, uh, Tom Brady to an Aaron Rodgers, a Drew Brees, I believe someday Andrew Luck is going to be mentioned in the same breath as all of those guys. I just believe it. I, I always have and I always will. I think that when you look at him right now, last year was clearly his worst. He threw 12 interceptions and seven starts, didn't slide, was constantly putting himself in, physically, in, in harm's way physically, rib, shoulder injury, the list goes on and on. Uh, but I think that he has the intestinal fortitude, uh, the willingness to come back, the pride, the personal pride that it takes uh, to be great. And, I, and the only question mark that I have is what's going on in Indy. I'm a big Pagano fan. I like Pagano genuinely. Um, I root for him. I hope that he is successful. I think he was lucky to keep his job because I think him and Grigson didn't have the greatest relationship, but I fought Grigson more for that than Pagano. I don't like the fact that Pep Hamilton was gone, but if, 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 if Pagano is, is more of a Chab, Rob Chudzinski guy who's now his offensive coordinator, there's nothing wrong with that. And then you bring in Brian Schottenheimer. And on one hand, Skip, I like Schottenheimer because I think the Jets missed him when he was gone. I don't think he was appreciated nearly as much in New York as he should have been. But when folks brag about a resume that includes him coaching Grayson Allen, Austin Davis, Sean Hill, Sam Bradford, Kelly Clem Kellen Clements, and Mark Sanchez, I'm like, with all due respect, Mr. Schottenheimer, what the hell is there to brag about? I mean, maybe we saw some development and improvement, but none of those guys knock your socks off. None of those guys make you say, wow, I got to have Brian Schottenheimer because look what they did. It may be their fault that they're not getting the, the tutelage or in, in grasping the tutelage that they should have. But I'm just not, I don't know about Schottenheimer right now. Uh, but Andrew Luck, I just believe in him. And I believe that he will be fine because last year was a necessary evil to have occurred, meaning his play. And yeah. I think he will make amends for it. I believe Andrew Luck has immense talent, immense potential that has not been realized. And mm -hmm. I found Brian Schottenheimer's comments to be contradictory because on the one hand, as Molly pointed out, a genius football IQ, we've heard that before. And on the other hand, Brian is saying, but you have to question some of the decisions he made as a quarterback last year, obviously. Well, it, he led the NFL in turnovers per game in the, what was it, seven games he played last year. Not great. Mm -hmm. As you know, and I keep pointing out because I have to, because the facts are the facts, in two of his four NFL seasons, he finished second in total turnovers, second in total turnovers in the National Football League. Once to Mark Sanchez, once to Jay Cutler. Not a great look for a guy who has the potential to be a big Super Bowl quarterback. We get all that as number one overall pick. So now Brian Schottenheimer saying, I've got to let luck be luck, let him be himself. Yet you know and I know that not only has he held the ball too long on occasions trying to make the play to win the game, but he'll take off and run and try to run over people all too often. He has taken a beating. He took a terrible beating last year that cost him nine games. I hope he's recovered for his sake because it, it was a hellacious beating he took last year and it was cumulative over the first three and then going into last year's fourth year. So what does what Schottenheimer do? Is he going to say, Go ahead and be yourself and, and take off and hold the ball too long and take hits that you shouldn't take. I don't, I don't see it. 
you know, you, you need a new way. You need to mature, grow up, and say, I can't do that anymore. I got to stay upright. As big and strong and raw boned as I am, I can't take that beating anymore. So I'm not sure. If, it felt like Brian's just kind of going with the new flow. He's bounced around the league and he's being a little too deferential, maybe, to Andrew Luck. So in the end, some things are going to have to change this year for Andrew Luck, or he's going to suffer the same fate he did last year. Well, you got a new offensive coordinator. You got a new quarterbacks coach. Uh, you know, guys like Fleena are gone. You're going to have new targets. I think there's a lot of changes that are taking place around Andrew Luck. We just have to hope that it's to his benefit and not to not basically servicing the ego of Gregson, who some argued was taking place in the past. And most important, of course, is that he stays healthy. Up next, a little playoff talk. Are Skip Spurs done? One thing we know for sure, he'll be watching it from a different TV. The guys will make their picks. That is next. I get a final score from you, please. Can you hear me? I don't hear. Can't hear? OKC. OK, Skip, you want to go? Can't hear anything? There you go. I got you now. I hear yeah. you okay. now. What's Sorry. your score? Sports Center was in my ear. What's your oh, score? Sports Center. <sighs> OKC. 97, Spurs, 94. Got it. Three-pointer. Uh, by the way, Molly is picking uh, Oklahoma City by 35, but that's yeah. beside the point. Definitely. You and I both had Spurs in seven in this series, but I, for one, uh, have the courage of my uh, convictions. I have San Antonio winning tonight, yeah. 98 to 94. And I have I'd have the courage of my convictions, too, if the Knicks were playing. Yeah, Unfortunately, right. they're irrelevant yeah. at yeah. this so time of year. So sad you don't claim your own city. I'm so sorry, Stephen Oklahoma City. Stephen Just Levita there for you. switched his pick, and it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. and we you don't you don't root for your yeah, city. Well, it's okay. I, I like the Spurs long before the Oklahoma yeah, City. Yeah, yeah. We no one wants here to yeah. defend it. Yeah. So the same week, the Las Vegas mayor says she is confident that the Raiders will relocate there. Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones said at a sponsor's golf tournament that he wouldn't be opposed to a team moving to Vegas. Quote, it has a flair for entertainment and it has two million people and they're avid sports fans, the full-time residents. They have a huge visiting contingent that more often than not are fans of some NFL football teams. You add all that together, and it's certainly in a conversation about the future relative to the NFL. One of my favorite quotes here, Jones calls Vegas one of the real crown jewels of communities in the United States. Skip Bayless, mm. do you agree with uh, your owner? Stephen A. Smith, when it comes to football decision-making, I've occasionally questioned my man Jerry Jones. You have often questioned my man Jerry Jones. When it comes to dollars and cents decision-making, I never question Jerry Jones. When it comes to marketing or business, long-term business vision, I believe Jerry Jones has some genius about him. He has a great eye for what will work in the future. He was a driving force in getting the Rams back to Los Angeles. And now I think he will become a driving force in getting a team to Las Vegas. And when Jerry speaks on these issues, I, for one, listen. I spent a lot of time around Jerry. He was a big part of three books that I wrote on the Dallas Cowboys. I spent hundreds of hours around him and interviewing him. And I believe in his business vision. I, I believe in Las Vegas now as an NFL destination in ways I never did before. Obviously, uh, casino gambling, internet gambling is now widespread in this country. And the, the stigma of Las Vegas gambling is starting to diminish, or as Roger Goodell said recently on Mike and Mike, the, the, the NFL has softened its stance on gambling as it relates to a team in Las Vegas. Once upon a time, the fear was that players would be susceptible perhaps to game fixing, more susceptible with the, the mob ties in Vegas back in the day. But you know and I know Las Vegas has changed dramatically. It has gone from Sin City you know, maybe going back 20, 30, 40 years ago and, and past, to now, dare I say, it's almost Disney-esque in its family appeal, that, that there's not so much of this, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. There, there's more of a family atmosphere now around the casinos that would appeal a little bit more to an NFL situation, a, an NFL team. My one concern here is what Molly brought up as she set this up, Jerry's talking about 2,000, I'm sorry, 2 million people. I'm, I'm not sure that's enough to sustain 
a passionate fandom for an NFL team, a lot of people would come and go who would be fans of other teams, and they would buy tickets to see their team play in Las Vegas. I, I'm not sure there's that core of hardcore fans that, that would that would make these games an, an obvious sellout. I, but if Jerry says so, I'm listening to Jerry. In this particular instance, I do as well. Uh, from a marketing standpoint, obviously he's not to be questioned. He's hype machine personified. The one thing that he knows how to do is generate a buzz, and he knows how to make money. Um, he doesn't know how to win. Uh, and I, let me take that back. He does know how to win. He just forgot over the last 20 years. But that's a different subject for another day. What I would say to you is this. 2.1 million residents in Las Vegas, over 42 million visitors to Las Vegas each year. And Jerry's right. Folks, obviously, are sports fans. Uh, would I be concerned about gambling? Certainly, I still would. Would I be concerned about the imagery of the NFL because they're so tightwad about everything now, uh, considering you know any bit of negative publicity is something that they believe compromises the shield? I do believe that you're inviting trouble. So you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? And that's where I'm a little bit torn. Would I do it, Skip? Chances are I would. But that's because I'm a chance taker. Whereas in the case of the National Football League, even though they proclaim themselves to be one as well, the fact is that they would be a bit reticent on so many levels because of the potential problems. And you would ask yourself, do you really need to do this? You needed a team in Los Angeles. You needed a team in the second largest market in the United States of America. You don't necessarily need a team in Las Vegas. You don't necessarily need that. So you got to ask yourself, way to risk the reward. Would I do it? Sure I would. Because I think there's money to be made. I think the fact that you got Sin City, which clearly has tremendous buzz, it would help to elevate the profile of the NFL even more so than it already is. Not to mention the fact that with, with fantasy sports leagues and beyond, uh, the reality is, is that whether the NFL likes it or not, it's associated with that stuff in ways it never was in the past anyway now. So when you take that into consideration, it's worth the risk. I wouldn't hesitate to do it, but I do understand the reticence on part of some people who may feel that way. You also have to take into account that no mm -hmm. owner was closer to the late great Al Davis than Jerry Jones was. Al took him under, took Jerry under his wing early on, taught him much of what he knows about running an NFL team. And now that Al's son is not only running the Raiders, but wants to move the Raiders to Las Vegas, it's possible Jerry is trying to help the son gain a little momentum to get the team in Las Vegas. So it's not like yeah. he would put an expansion team there. He's actually talking about the Raiders moving to Las Vegas, I think. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he is. He offered to put up $500 million, um, <clears throat> of his own money. Uh, there's $150 million they can get from additional investors, and then the rest will come from tourist taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, to build a 65,000-seat stadium. Uh, so, you know, again, if they're able to pull that off, should it be something that the NFL strongly considers? Absolutely, because there's a few teams in the league that I would question, do they need to have an NFL team? Mm -hmm. Yep, I would agree. Their respective cities. I think that Las Vegas could do a far better job in promoting the NFL brand yep. and, 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 and bringing quality football to that area that it would benefit the league far more to have a team in Vegas than yep. it would in at least three or four cities that, the, that already have NFL teams. No, I got it, but it would hurt my heart to see the Raiders leave Oakland, yeah. California. Yeah, I don't want them to leave Oakland. Yeah. The Oakland should have a football team. Yeah. Oakland should have a football team. I think you could argue, too, it could help the sport internationally, potentially, too, because all Good. the international tourists. Interesting. NHL also eyeing Vegas, but that's for an expansion team. Up next, Jordan Spieth, his collapse, one of the most memorable at Augusta in sports history. So could any athlete right the ship after collapsing in that grand fashion on that stage? Find out next.